Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning, everybody. My name is Layla, and you're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. We're so glad you could join us this morning, but before we get into the Word, let's take a moment and pray. God, we just thank you for who you are, Lord, and the joy that you bring to our lives, God, that we can rejoice in you, Lord, and that we have victory, Lord, that we're untouched by the enemy and what he's doing in the world, Lord, that you keep us and you protect us protect us lord and that you bring those that you have called into your fold lord and that we get we are able to help them lord that we can walk beside them lord we just thank you for your word and that your word never fails lord and that you change not lord there's not a shadow of variation in you lord there is no evil in you lord you are only good and we just thank you for your goodness today in jesus name amen in jesus name amen and amen well good morning and welcome everybody we are glad to have you with us as we continue to discuss and study the Lord's house. And at this point, we are going over the garments for the priesthood and the breastplate. But before we get into the word, I just want to ask that you would like, subscribe, and share this episode um, if you're blessed by it and have the intention of being a blessing to others, ourselves included. We're definitely blessed when you know more people subscribe and more people share because we are focused on fulfilling all the Lord has, I'll say, commanded us to do, which is to preach the word and to the four corners of the earth, mm-hmm. so that everyone has the opportunity to hear the gospel and to learn and grow in knowledge, but in relationship with our Lord and Savior. That is the goal, and that's part of what He has commanded us to do in this ministry. So. We just want to present the opportunity for each of you to assist and share in the, the labor, if you will. And of, the blessing. And the blessing of doing that, yes. So, that being said, can I get a volunteer to read from Exodus 28, verses 15 through 30, please? I will. All right, sir. You shall make the breastplate of judgment. Artistically woven according to the workmanship of the ephod, you shall make it of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen, you shall make it. It shall be doubled into a square. A span shall be its length, and a span shall be its width. And you shall put settings of stones in it. Four rows of stones. The first row shall be sardis, a topaz, and an emerald. This shall be the first row. The second row shall be a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond. The third row, a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst. One second, I have to flip the page. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold settings. And the stones shall have the names of the sons of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, each one with its own name. They shall be according to the twelve tribes. You shall make chains for the breastplate at the end, like braided cords of pure gold. And you shall make two rings of gold for the breastplate, and put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. Then you shall put the two braided chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate. And the other two ends of the two braided chains you shall fasten to the two settings, and put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod in the front. You shall make two rings of gold, and put them on the two ends of the breastplate, on the edge of it, which is on the which is on the inner side of the ephod, and two other rings of gold you shall make, and put them on the sh- two shoulder straps underneath the ephod towards its front, right at the seam above the intricately woven band of the ephod. Then you shall bind the breastplate by means of its rings to the rings of the ephod, using a blue cord, so that it is above the intricately woven band of the ephod, and so that the breastplate does not come loose from the ephod. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel on the breastplate of judgment over his heart when he goes into the holy place as a memorial before the Lord continually. And he shall put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. So Aaron shall bear bear the judgment of the children of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. 
Mm-hmm. Amen. Now, I know we talked about a lot of different things in the, the previous episodes, right? Um, but there's so much more in this. So, I want to begin by saying this, right? We, I think we might have briefly mentioned the rings of gold for the breastplate, right? Gold represents what again? Divine nature. The divine nature, right? Because it's been purified, it's been, right, has no sin and iniquity and all those blemishes, right? Impurities Mm -hmm. in it, unlike brass, right? Yes. Okay. Brass representing human nature. So the rings were of gold for the breastplate, right? And there were to be two of them. So, what does two represent? Um, I'm not quite sure. I could think it was Adam and the woman. Okay. So, that would be union or unity, right? Agreement. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, notice that there are two rings, and then there are two braided chains of gold, right? And that's in verses 23 and 24, right? And so, as we were reading, of course, uh, well, not of course, <laughs> but um, I was reminded of Ecclesiastes uh, 4.12, where it says, um, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, right? Because these were braided chains of gold, right? Uh, and then, of course, it continues and says, uh, a cord of three strands is not easily broken, right? However, Amos says this, right? Going back to two and how it represents union and unity, right? A walking together. In Amos 3.3, 3, there's the question. How can two walk together Unless they agree. Everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So we have to come into agreement, alignment with God to walk with him. And that's the only way we can walk in perfection, being holy because he is holy. Right? And that we commanded Moses to do in Genesis 17. Right? The Lord goes before him. And he says, so be holy, for I am holy. But then there's the other aspect, because the chains connect to the gold rings, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a clinging to that must be had. We said how, how all of this represents, it's a type and shadow of what are exists in the heavenlies. Also, It represents our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then three, the third thing, is that it is a representation, a pattern, an example for us to follow. Right? Mm -hmm. So in this, there is a demonstration of how we are to cling to or depend on the Lord Mm -hmm. for our everything. And there are, a number of different verses, right? Um, Deuteronomy 10.20. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him and cling to him, and you shall swear by his name. Deuteronomy 13.4. You shall follow the Lord your God and fear him, and you shall keep his commandments, listen to his voice, serve him, and cling to him. Joshua in 23.8, Joshua 23.8 says, But you are to cling to the Lord your God as you have done to this day. This is, of course, talking about the follow-on generation that entered into the promised land. Right? Um, Go back to Deuteronomy 11. For if you are careful to keep all this commandment which I am commanding you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to hold fast to him. Right? Um, Oh, excuse me. 2 Kings 18.6. For he clung to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. 
Psalm 63, 8, my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. And then Jeremiah 13, 11, for as the waste band clings to the waist of a man, so I made the whole household of Israel and the whole household of Judah cling to me, declares the Lord, that they might be for me a people for renown, renown. Mm-hmm. for praise and for glory but they did not listen this matters right because we already talked about in this this breastplate it is a representation of what exists in the heavenlies right talking about how it's a perfect square and if you look at revelation it describes heaven as a perfect square or the heavenly community right as a perfect square. So this is a representation of what already exists. And where, well, those that are believers, uh, I don't want to say are trying to get to, but desire to enter in or to be, to re-enter into the heavenly community. Yes, return, certainly. Exactly. Certainly. So I bring this up because it, it matters. It matters for us. But the Lord is already giving a, demonstration a physical demonstration that people can look could look upon to see how it all works how it's all connected mm-hmm. and by that i mean this is how you get to re-enter the community trust in the lord with all your mind heart body soul strength depend on him cling to him for your everything mm-hmm. he's already provided it we're his children it was meant there for, he gave it for us. He gave himself for us. Hmm. Does everybody get that? Is everybody tracking? Yes. Um, so, I mean, it, there's huge significance. There, like we have been saying throughout this whole study, our God is a God of details. No detail is too small. Right? Yes. Um, no detail is too small, including even where the breastplate sat over the heart. And we said this in a previous podcast, but where your treasure is, there your heart is also. All right? Yes. Christ's home, as our home, is in heaven. His desire was to be pleasing to the Father. He clung to him. He did not say, anything of his own initiative he did not do anything of his own initiative he only said and did what the father commanded through his holy spirit it's the exact same for us right, so i just want to say that and i want to open up the floor for each of you to to share what the holy spirit is speaking and ministering to you and ask any questions if you have them so who'd like to begin i have a quick question all right layla the urim and the thumim what is that for like i thought it was like yahtzee dice or maybe monopoly dice and they're playing like one of those games and like Uh rolling it to see how many steps left and how many steps forward but uh (laughs) it's not yahtzee (laughs) definitely not yahtzee um let me get there so that's in verse 30 Right? Yes. Um, so, uh, I'm going to take a page out of Dean's book here. Oh, you got an interlinear uh, up already? I was going to head to it. Okay, well, please. Yeah, go for it there, brother. Uh, I love that you go there so so often and so quickly. Well, it's just because we have all these wonderful electronic apps that make it so easy <laughs> to do it. So uh, the Urim, uh, the Urim is a noun, masculine, uh, actually it's um, Urim. That's right. Yes. Part of the high priest breastplate. Um, the origin is a plural of Ur, lights, mm-hmm. the uh, oracular, oracular, oracular. By brilliancy of the figures of the high priest's mm-hmm. breastplate. Mm-hmm. 
I don't think it gives us any enlightenment there to what you were asking. At uh, least I know they're not yelling Yahtzee over a table and dancing in the Philistine's face. The two meme mm-hmm. is a plural of Tom, perfections, one of the epaulets of the objects in the high breast breastplate as an emblem of complete truth. Mm-hmm. And since it was used to get guidance from God, then complete truth would certainly be appropriate there, wouldn't it? Absolutely. That's all he has is the truth. That is all he has. But has and is. So so again is the way, the truth. Amen. Amen. He has the truth, he is the truth. Amen. So so I've got a few scriptures for everybody to look up, right? Um uh Charles. Go to Leviticus eight eight. Promise Numbers twenty seven twenty one. Layla, Deuteronomy 33, 8. Honey, would you mind going to 1 Samuel 28, 6? Sure. Dean, would you mind looking up Ezra 2, verse 63? And I need one more for Nehemiah. You say Ezra 2, 63? Yes. And then... One more volunteer could go to Nehemiah seven sixty five. I'll go there. So these are other places in Scripture where the Urim and Thummim are mentioned. Okay. Are you ready, sir? Do you mind reading your first oh. one? Excuse me, Dad. You said Leviticus eight. Um, eight. Yes. Yes. Do you? Um, excuse me, Dad. Which scripture wasn't? Which verse was? Verse eight. Okay. Eight eight. Leviticus eight eight. Then he put the breastplate on him, and he put the urim and the thummim in the breastplate. Okay. <coughs> Promise. Don't um, no, mine was. Numbers twenty seven, twenty one. Oh, sorry. I am in twenty one. Well, while you're looking it up, Layla, would you mind reading yours? Um, Deuteronomy thirty three eight. And of Levi he said, Let your Thumin and your Urim be with your Holy One, whom you tested at Massa, and with whom you contended at the waters of Meribah. Okay. Honey, would you mind reading yours? Sure. Is Promise ready? Do you want him to go Oh, first? Promise, you ready? Oh. Yes. All right, go ahead, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, baby. He shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall inquire before the Lord for him by the judgment of, of the Urim. By his word they shall go out, and at his word they shall come in. He and all the children of Israel with them, all the congregation. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And First uh, Samuel 28, verse 6. Yes. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim and, or by the prophets. Okay. Dean? Ezra 2. And 63, uh, the governor told them that they were not to partake of the most holy food until there should be a priest to consult the Urim and the Tumim. Mm-hmm. Charles? And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things till a priest could consult with, your, with the Urim and the Thumim. Is that okay. the same? Do you guys just read the same one? Did you read Ezra or Nehemiah? Nehemiah. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Mm. Amen to that. Ezra and Nehemiah did, I'll say, operate or function um, in the the building, rebuilding of the, well, I'll say the building of the second temple. So there probably is going to be some overlap there. And, and similar things said, they were working in conjunction. Not to get too sidetracked, but don't some people believe that's technically one book anyway? There are some that, that hold that thought, yes. Yeah, don't, don't really call it Ezra and Nehemiah, they call it Ezra and Nehemiah. yes. Yes, there are. Um, you know, and that is, I'll say, an opinion. And um, they're okay to have that, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, um, as long as we're not taking anything away from Scripture, you know, as mm-hmm. it were. 
And I think the conclusion is God said what he said. <laughs> yeah, amen. He, meant he what said, said what he said. So <laughs> You say it doesn't matter what title he put on the book or what verse it is, his word is still true. That's right. He said what he said, and he meant that. And he said, not one jot or tittle is going to pass away. Not one. Everything will be fulfilled. Right? So details matter. And mm-hmm. in the details, talking about the Urum and the Thuming, right? Yes. It is a sign and a symbol. And it is also one of the ways that the high priest, I'll say, heard from the Lord, right? How, how they, one of the ways they communicated with the Lord. It's not the only way, right? And, and honey, you read that in Samuel, right? Mm-hmm. How um, they didn't hear from the Lord. Saul didn't. Hear. Saul did not hear from the Lord. He did not, uh, either, either by he, voice. Either by dreams. Dream, that's it. Thank you. Dreams, the Urim, or the, the prophets. prophets. Mm-hmm. So, it's a difficult place to be in, but that typically comes from a hardness of heart, right? But then there's also this, right? And, and Dean, uh, I love how you brought up the interlinear, because I was going to go there for the, that exact reason. The Urim represented light, right? We talked about how hmm. it goes back and represents Christ. So, Christ is who, right? John, the Gospel of John, says... That he was the light. Right? But then there's the other aspect. The Thumim represented what? Perfection, right? Yes. Okay. Perfection. So everything operating in full, complete, lacking nothing. Right, but also the perfect will of God. Amen. (laughs) Yes. Exactly. Um. So represents our Lord (laughs) and Savior. So there's a physical representation, another physical representation of him in the Urum and the Thummim, because again, as we're saying, he never said anything the Father didn't say mm-hmm. or do anything the Father didn't do, nothing of his own initiative. Mm-hmm. It was everything in line with the perfect will of God. Mm-hmm. So he meant that when he taught his disciples how to pray. And he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, your kingdom Make its appearance mm-hmm. here. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It wasn't just fancy words. And I know that, um, you know, American believers or those that have grown up hearing those things, you're taught that as a young child, that's part of Sunday school, things of that nature. Those words can become empty to us and just a recital. But he meant what he said. He said what he said. <laughs> and he meant it. Um, but also, I wanted to stop by that, again, the perfect will of God. Um, mm-hmm. You have heard me say this before. There's a difference between the perfect will of God and the permissive will of God. Oh, amen. The permissive will is dangerous for you. That means you won't listen to reason. Okay. Have, have, do what you do. And then you bear the consequences of that. That doesn't mean God wants that for you. It just means you will not listen to, other, to him otherwise. Then um, there's a, the perfect will. There's good. And there's acceptable, but there's that permissive that that don't ever go to the permissive will of God. Do Stay not. in the perfect Amen. will. And when they they use the the Urim and the Thum, 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 to ask God what was His will, and it wasn't the Lord didn't cause them to jump out of the breastplate and roll across the floor to signal a message. That's not how that happened. It was when they were inquiring and asking God a question that He would answer. Um, you saw David. Lord, shall I go up after them? Should I do this, that, and the other? And the the goal of asking God and inquiring of him is to get what? His perfect will. The answer. (laughs) And he doesn't Lord, what do you want to have happen? What do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? That's that is the the reason, because there's a trust and a dependence and a clinging to him. Not operating of our own will or initiative but receiving it from him. And then, uh, because we love him, we apply it. We are obedient to carry it out. Mm-hmm. And, and do what he said. But, um, so Psalm 119, 130 says, the entrance of your word, your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. Mm-hmm. Right? We talked, we just covered one. One was light, and one was the perfect will of God. Or perfection, but... If you're yes. asking God a question, do you want him to tell you other than his best? No. I wouldn't. No. Well, but the perfection, there's an, 
another aspect to this mm -hmm. or that we haven't covered yet. What was the breastplate called? Verse 15. Exodus 28, verse 15. The breastplate the of judgment. Oh, okay. What did Jesus say? I did not come to judge, judge but if I do judge, my judgment is righteous or no. Wait. <laughs> it is either, depending on your translation, true or pure. Denotes perfection. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Again, speaking and representing our Lord and Savior. All right? And, and yes. I, I want to bring that up for two, right? There is one appointed to judge, and that is Jesus. And you see that in Revelation. He is the one that is going to judge. Right? Yes. We are to judge sin. And what I mean is separating the holy from the profane. Right? We should be able to, again, this is all done through the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, look at something, and the Holy Spirit reveals to us, no, that's what I, I said, that's okay, and that's sin. All right? Because even in the Urim and the Thummim, part of it was a a way to hear from the Lord, right? Yes. As you read, honey, honey, there were dreams. Other places in scripture, there are visions. There's the Urim and Thummim, right? The Lord spoke face to face. There are a number of ways the Lord speaks. Solomon writes, and the Lord said this to my heart mm -hmm. in the Song of Solomon, right? Yes. Okay, the Lord communicates to us on a number of different ways. Every one of those ways is, literally, when he speaks to us, it's the oracles of God. That's why Paul writes that when we speak, we should speak as though we are speaking the oracles of God, which is only what the Lord says to say and to do. Okay. And let's, let's bring that New Testament, because we don't mm -hmm. have the Urim and the Thummim Absolutely. To, to live by. This was what God gave them, because they didn't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. He was not given broadly in the earth yet until after Jesus died and um, ascend it to heaven, right? Does everybody track in with that? So please don't get any dice out. Do not. Don't, don't be like Saul and go to the mediums. Don't, no, 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 no. Don't cast lots, right? Don't, even, don't do it. Even the apostles. When they tried it, right? it was not the Lord's best because you see him adding. Um, Paul later on. Saul, who he called Paul, right? Mm -hmm. Changed his name. That was the yes. disciple that the Lord chose. And. I'm sure God loves Matthias, but we don't hear anything else from him after that. But that was all they knew up until that point. So God gave them grace for where they were. But we have the Holy Spirit in us today. Amen. He is our guide, right? That's what the Lord said. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. Ha! Huh? And show you things to come, <laughs> right? He will take of mine yes. and declare it unto you. Show you things. Illuminate. Bring light. light. Hey, how about that? Hallelujah. <laughs> He will declare it. He'll make it known to you what's coming, what you need to do, your response. Even when he, um, Jesus told the, the disciples that they were going to be dragged before magistrates and they were going to be betrayed by their family members because of his namesake, he said, don't even think about what you're going to say ahead of time. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say in that moment. So that meant you have constant fellowship and communion all the time constant conversation to hear what the will of the Lord is, what the perfect will of God is. So you know how to act and carry yourself and behave in every situation and circumstance. So we thank God for what they had in the Old Testament. Um, while our God is the same God, he always meant for them to have communication with him, with guidance and understanding so that they could make the right choices. After the blood of Jesus was shed and after he was raised from the dead and he ascended, the Lord transitioned to, I want you to have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Amen. He couldn't do that widely before, right? And upon us before because of sin. Now that sin has been paid with the blood of Jesus, Holy Spirit is like, here I am. This is the perfect, this is the restoration. This is the perfect will of God. Adam and woman had Holy Spirit, walked with him daily. We have that restored now. Now it's our choice if we walk with him or not, but he's here and he's available to us mm -hmm. to be Amen. in and upon us. Amen. Amen. So just living and dwelling in us, 
and his hands upon us, empowering us to do, to carry out, to accomplish, fulfill all the things that the Lord had predestined for us to do mm -hmm. in Not him, him, in him, Amen. and through him. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's a lot there. So we're going to pause so everyone can um, search the scriptures, let the Holy Spirit minister to you, and, and of course, reach out if you have any questions. You know, we love to hear from you. We love to connect. We love to discuss the word. So, and, and with that, um, we have said <laughs> multiple things um, as far as, you know, if you want to join us, you know, if you're in the Hampton Roads area and you want to join us, please, you're more than welcome. Not necessarily that you have to have a microphone <laughs> in front, right? But just to be a part, to fellowship with other believers that have a desire to learn and grow in knowledge and relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. But then also I want to add to that, um, as in standing, right? We, uh, honey, honey, you and I, mm -hmm. yes, we are pastors, but we don't always or only speak at churches, congregations, synagogues, whatever, whatever that is, right? Mm -hmm. If you, who, the listener, as anywhere in the world, are willing to invite us to open up your, your home, so you, to learn, so, whether it's a, a, a mini seminar or conference or something, right, in your, in your home, in your living room, mm -hmm. invite us. Mm -hmm. oh, our standard is this. We're going to seek the Lord, and as soon as he gives us the okay, we're absolutely going to reach out and coordinate the details. Mm -hmm. But we are willing to do this. And, mm -hmm. and that's literally anywhere in the world. So if you have a desire to learn and grow in knowledge and relationship with the Lord, and you want us to teach us, just invite us. Mm -hmm. And this is not a, a, an attempt at usurping anybody or pastor. And, and I say this in this way, or because of this. You, who, everyone that's listening, you have the inherent responsibility for your spiritual and natural growth and development. Mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't fall on a pastor. I have a responsibility for my own spiritual growth and development. Mm -hmm. Honey, you do for yours. We all Absolutely. do for us, ourselves, individually. Mm -hmm. And yes, the Lord has given people that can help us learn and grow in, in the knowledge of Him and in relationship with Him, actually knowing God, not just about Him. Mm -hmm. Right? But we also have a role to play in that, individually. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to encourage you, and and this is a, a standing thing, right? If you have a desire, just invite us. We're going to seek the Lord. And as soon as he gives the okay, well, we're coordinating and we will come. And, and get to know you and connect and fellowship. And we're going to learn and grow in the Lord together. So that being said, we're going to pause there. Can I get a volunteer to close us in prayer, please? I will. All right, I promise. Lord, I just thank you for today. I just thank you for giving us your best so that we can, so that we know that we're loved, Lord. Lord, I also just thank you for showing your love and just telling us. Lord, I also just thank you for giving us everything we need so that we don't stumble. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to a Day of Prayers morning Bible study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through a Day of Prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the 
truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.